If this paint comes out, it'll be an absolute miracle. It's gonna look like a completely different airplane from when you guys first saw it. Wow, that looks really good. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. Welcome back to Rebuild Rescue. Guys, today we're here at the hangar with the TB20. And if you remember when we first bought this airplane, it was a complete catastrophe. Take a look. So the first thing that I noticed about this airplane is it has moss or something rooted into the paint. So the paint on this is way worse than the paint on the 401. Nature has taken it over 1000%. With this airplane, I don't know, I don't know how well it's gonna come out. Looking at the tops of the wings, the tops of the surfaces, it's gonna need repainted. It has so much grime and stuff all over it, growing out of it, that it's dried the paint up. It's cracking underneath. If this paint comes out, it'll be, a, it'll be an absolute miracle. I got it. Got it? Yep. I just, I can't believe how full this is. I've never seen an airplane. I mean, the 401 was sitting forever. It was, it was maybe half this bad. Have, have you ever I've seen, never seen one this full. I have to admit I'm a little bit worried now because Joe here has been an A&P for 35 years and this is the worst one he's seen. Sometimes I like to break records, <laughs> sometimes I don't. This is not one so to we'll break. see what happens. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna get a vacuum and vacuum this out. <laughs> wow, just piles in there. If you guys ever need to clean out in between your fins, man, a Sawzall blade, it, it works awesome. It works amazing. It fits in here perfectly between the cylinders, between the fins. It's the first time we tried it, but I mean, I think it's it. It's beautiful. It, it cleans it right out. Yep. If you want to cut the crap, right here you go, brother. Clear.
Wow, that looks really good. That looks awesome. Yeah, so I think this is this is gonna clean up pretty much perfect. I can't wait to get this all wet sanded up and the whole thing buffed. I, I think the whole airplane's gonna turn out like really, really good. This thing's gonna look absolutely amazing after it's all cleaned and it's all wet sanded and it's all buffed up. It's gonna look like a completely different airplane from when you guys first saw it. Good job. Thank you, sir. There were so many of you that commented in the video where we flew the TB20 back here to the hangar about how it was still dirty. Well, we didn't have water supply. I didn't want to damage this fiberglass hood at all because I knew it was in great shape. And if you guys look at it, actually, if you guys look at the whole airplane, Larry from MOMYC was here with my team and got this thing looking amazing. Now, you guys probably remember Larry from the 401 video when he came and saved the day when I was still in a wheelchair, when I was still recovering from my accident. If you haven't seen that video, go check our video out. Also, go visit Larry at MLMYC. Watch his YouTube video. He has some awesome cleanup videos. Well, he came and cleaned this airplane up. I was supposed to be here, but I was down and out, terribly sick, stuck in Dallas. Hey Jason, can I uh, can I get that login information for the Skillshare team account? Oh yeah, today's video sponsor. Here, let me text it over to you. All right, you should have it, man. Awesome, thanks. Did you pick out what you're gonna be learning about yet? Yeah, actually, uh, I saw a class by Joey Bettenbrook called Motion Tracking Text in Adobe After Effects. Why'd you pick that? I've always wanted to learn how to do some motion tracking text for video editing and stuff like that, and I kept looking online trying to find a good tutorial and I just couldn't find anything so I hopped on Skillshare and they actually have this way that you can check mark how long you want the class to be and I found one that was only a half an hour long and it looks like pretty promising. So Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So guys, what we've done here at Rebuild Rescue is we've challenged our whole team to up their game. The guys kept seeing how I was on my phone a lot of times you know, whether we're eating lunch or we're eating breakfast or even just hanging out, I'd be on my phone and I'd be learning new skills through Skillshare. They got curious and they asked me, you know, how can we get involved? How can we up our game? So what we decided to do is we get a team account and I challenged everybody here at Rebuild Rescue to take a class or two to learn and to start exercising their minds a bit. It's been awesome. The more we've done it, the more engaged I found the whole team. And especially Harrison here, he's really upped his game and now we can't get him off of Skillshare because he just keeps learning new things. So check out Skillshare. There are so many classes, there's so many things you can get involved and there's so many things you can learn by some really amazing teachers. So the first 1,000 of you who click the link below are gonna get one month absolutely free of Skillshare. That's one month to up your game, that's one month to add value to yourself. That's priceless. So I'm down here at Dallas at a conference. Um, I've been down here for a few days after Oshkosh, which Oshkosh was awesome. It was so cool meeting all you guys out there and, and just spending some time at one of the most amazing events I've ever been to. But unfortunately, I am really sick. I went to the hospital, to the urgent care center and uh, you know they uh, they told me I should probably uh, kind of just hunker down here at the hotel for a while. I shouldn't be flying. So unfortunately, I'm gonna miss meeting Larry from MOMYC. He called me and said, "Hey, you know, could could you give me a hand with this Volvo? Um, it's really bad." And I was so excited about meeting him there, but I'm gonna be stuck down here for at least a few days, and I'm totally gonna miss that. So I'm gonna give Harrison a call, see if he might be able to grab Jake and go over and give Larry a hand. Yo, what's up, Jason? Hey, I'm gonna need you to do me a huge favor if you can. I'm gonna be stuck down here in Dallas for a couple of days. I just got back from the urgent care. I don't think I've ever been this sick my whole life. And I'm supposed to meet Larry over in Doylestown to work on that Volvo. Okay. Is there any way you could grab Jake 
and just and just go give him a hand. Like I was supposed to be, you know, to help him all day. And there's just no way I'm going to be down here for at least a few days yet. He's also supposed to come up and work on the TB20. Yeah. And I'm just not going to be able to make it, bro. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, no worries. Way. Yeah. Let me uh, let me see um, if Jake's free, and then I'll uh, we'll we'll head down there and um, help him with that Volvo, and then the, with the TB. All right. Sounds good. I'm gonna I'll give Larry a call and let him know what's going on. And then, uh, yeah, we just, he, he was such a help on that 401 and, yeah. you know, and so we, we just, we got to make sure that we get down there and help him out. He's actually going to be like cleaning that up and then donating it or selling it to donate it, you know, for some nonprofit and stuff. So, nice. you know, let's get down there and whatever we can do to help him out. I like, I really appreciate it. Yeah. I feel terrible that I'm not able to be there, but yeah, know, no worries. I, I, I'm going to go back in here and crawl in bed for a few days. Yeah, dude, no worries at all. Yeah, we can totally handle that. All right, man. Cool, Thank man. You. Talk to you later. All right, man. All right, see bye. Bye. What's up, What's guys? Up? What's up, Larry? How you been? What's going on, man? Yeah, thanks for coming over. Definitely. Thanks for having us. No worries. Good to see you again. Good to see you. All right. So, where is the man? So, he got he got a little sick, so it's just me and Jake, but uh, we're here to get some work done. His leg's okay, though? But now His he's... leg's okay. Now right. he's just feeling a little under the weather. All right. Well, I brought the real detailers here. This is great. How about that? <laughs> Come on. Look at this thing. Jeez, that's rough, dude. Wow. Look at this windshield. Junk everywhere. Inside, there's mouse poo. Not bad. Man, as you as picked as out as a see, nice one for us. Yeah, as soon as I see mouse poo, I think of Jason. I said, where, where is my guy? Where's the <laughs> Exactly, I have nightmares on that one.
Hey, Larry, we're heading out. Oh. All right, man, thanks so much for your help. I appreciate it. Dude, thank it. you. Yeah, it was fun hanging out. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to see you tomorrow. Jason called and said, you got my two guys today. That means you got to come back and help polish a plan. I'm not exactly sure which one, but I'm pretty excited. Yeah, awesome. That sounds like fun. All right, I'll see you guys in a few hours. Cool. Sounds thanks good, again. man. See you. Yep. So it's like day three being stuck down here at the hotel in Dallas. The guys are working really hard up at the hangar, and I'm totally missing out. But it's awesome to have a really good team and, you know, knowing that stuff's getting done. Can't wait to get back home, though. All right, so it's just me and Jake again. Jason's still feeling a little bit under the weather. Today, we have Ammo NYC coming to clean up the TV20. What do you think, dude? I think it's going to come out pretty good. I mean, there's a couple spots, you know, like this still needs cleaned up. Yeah, for sure. Still got some of that stuff on there. Yeah. And we're going the wings. There's some spots that we might need to sand, you know, but it should come out pretty good. Pretty excited. Yeah, definitely. Yo, what's up, dude? Yo, good to see How you. Been? Nice to see you. Good to see you. How are you doing, man? A long time no see, man. Yeah. I see the sea of planes here. I'm going to go out on a limb and say this one. Yep. Yes. What do you think? I think it's pretty chalky, but it's one of those ones sort of like the Volvo. Uh, I think it's going to come back. It's just a lot of what we call dead skin on top. And so if I can polish that off and you remove sort of the mask on top of it, underneath will be nice and shiny and bright. So hopefully there's enough paint. We'll do some measurements and uh, take a look. But I think this thing's going to come back. Okay, so right off the bat, I did a test with a wool pad and some polish. You can see the paint depth gauge, we're at about 3.3. Now the area that I just polished, 1.68, meaning I took about a mil off. What that means is that's a mil of dead paint. So there's a lot of heavy, dead, dried out, oxidized, however you want to describe it, paint. And it's looking pretty good, but the challenge here is it's so thin, I can't necessarily get underneath um, all the oxidation to ch sort of reveal the really awesome paint that's on the rest of these here. So we have to kind of be a little bit cautious because if I go too deep, I can go right through and then we don't have any paint at all. So this is one of those times where you have to know when to say when. This is a perfect example. So I want to keep going and keep, keep playing with the paint, but if I go too deep, uh, we're gonna have some problems. So I, I have to keep playing with it, but right now that's probably uh, short of any wax or anything on there. You see how the Volvo just came out like really quick? Yeah. yeah that's, man, I mean. That, that's getting there. I mean, it's certainly better than over here. You can just see, you can see the light difference, but I haven't polished it either, so.
How's everything going over here? Dude, you gotta feel how hot this freaking thing is. Dude, that thing's like melting. Look at my hand. <laughs> Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. It's definitely looking better. It's definitely smoother. It's getting there. What do you think? Uh, where there's paint, it'll look pretty good. You can see here. So the rest of the blue here, there's, there's paint on this. There's paint here. This is where the trouble's at. But if the goal is just to make it fly a little bit better and be a little bit safer, I think the wing is where it needs to be right now. It needs to be repainted, but we'll play with this now. But you can see the difference is night and day. Yeah, that definitely looks better. If there's paint there, I'll make it work, but there you go. Yeah. Okay, after a few hours of polishing, as you can see, I'm a hot mess over here. There's a huge difference between the wing and the fuselage here. So I'm gonna draw something, as I always do, I gotta get a little bit nerdy here, but as you can see, it's coming out really well. What makes it interesting compared to cars is a lot of people have already texted me and say like, why is this not working, that kind of thing. So right off the bat, let's just pretend this is a car. And let's just say that this is six mil, right? So when you get fading, just like it's happening here, you can see it's all faded, just like it is on the wing, and it comes down, Let's say you go to about here, and all of this here is faded and oxidized. So I come in and I polish, and I bring this all the way down to here, and what do you have? You have beautiful paint underneath here, and it shines like you're seeing right here. Now what I just learned is this is covered. I didn't know that, but when they got this plane uh, from the woods or wherever, this actually had a cover on it, so it didn't absorb the sun. It didn't have a whole lot of degradation like the wings did, so that's why I'm having some trouble. Now if you come onto a plane, so if this is a car, if I come onto a plane, right, you have the same thing. Here's the top. Now, this is the bottom, because now you have six mil. The plane is really only two mil. Why? They put less paint on there, because if you've ever held a five gallon container of paint, it weighs a lot. Obviously, a plane, everything's concerned about weight. So you're saving a whole lot of weight by putting less paint on the plane. So in this case, you have the same thing. The sun is still affecting it, still degrading it, discoloring it, and sort of just dying on the vine, so to speak. So if I come in here and try to scoop this up and scoop this up, you literally, you don't have anything left. That's what I'm seeing over there. That's why there's, I can't get any shine out of it. There's nothing left other than metal. Here, because it's been protected, I have a little bit more. It's, it's faded to about here-ish, if that makes sense. So now I'm taking this much off, and now this area looks really shiny. That's why this looks shiny. So that's what's going on behind the scenes. We have to finish the rest of this, and I think I'm gonna save him a decent amount of money because I don't think this area needs to be painted, but all the wings, all the structure definitely needs to be repainted.
Bonito. Dude, it looks awesome. It's much better now. Yeah. It's, uh, it's the front end. That was kind of the tough area right around here with all that green mold and lichen or whatever. But it came out a lot better. Still some room to grow, but uh, I think I think you probably can avoid painting the rest of this area. But like we said before, uh, this is going to be need, need to be repainted. But man, I am exhausted. It was super fun though. Yeah, that was awesome, dude. Jason, thanks, thanks so much for helping you us. You got man. it, man. Yeah. You got it. Say hi to Jason for me. Hey, buddy. Hope you're feeling better. Super fun, and I'll talk to you soon. So if you guys would have saw this TB20 a few weeks ago, well, maybe it's a few months ago now, if you would have saw this when we first went and looked at it in person, you would have thought I was crazy to ever think it would clean up and look this good. Larry from Ammo NYC came out, saved the day, grabbed my crew when I was sick and they buffed, sanded and polished on this thing for hours and it looks absolutely amazing. We're going to make it look like new. We'll have a little bit of touch-ups to do here and there. And then this thing's going to be looking awesome. So really the only thing that we have to do to the Trinidad yet is get this engine cleaned up. Everything else is done. And guys, that means we're gonna have a project finished. There's still some other stuff I wanna do to the TB20 to make it our own, but we really gotta get all of the bird crap off this engine because if we don't, it could really like kind of run hot. I'm so excited to get that dry ice blaster on this engine. If you guys haven't seen what one of those machines can do, you got to check it out. This is going to be so cool. So they're supposed to be here tomorrow with the delivery. And then a couple days later, they're going to be here. And we're going to start blasting all of this stuff right off the airplane. So guys, if you remember how bad this TB20 engine was, we cleaned it out. We actually used blades off of a sawzall to cut through the crap in between the fins to get it flyable. We want to clean this thing up 100%. I mean, if you look in here, like look at that bird crap, that's caked on. So the guys from Cold Jet got a hold of us. They saw the video and they were like, you know what? We got to bring one of the machines out that we have. You're going to be amazed because it is going to clean it up 100%. We're so excited. We've seen a couple of videos on, you know, what the cold jet machines do. We are so stoked. We're also going to use it on the 401. So, but this is gonna be the first one we're gonna use it on. This is the last thing we have to do to the TB20 to make it 100% ready to go. This project will be 100% done. That doesn't mean that we're not gonna make the airplane our own and upgrade some avionics and do some paint work and stuff on it, but you know, Ammo NYC came in, cleaned this thing up. He did an awesome job, and I can't believe the whole crew here saved the day. They came in. I was so sick. So thank God for an awesome team. Harrison, Jake, Larry, you guys are so awesome. It means the world to me. And, uh, you know, you guys just did an awesome job. So, so the Cold Jet machine is, should be here tomorrow. And then the guys from Cold Jet, they're coming, they're gonna train us on how to use the machine, and I'm gonna bring you guys with. So we're getting ready for Cold Jet to come over to the hangar tomorrow so we can use that awesome dry ice blaster on the TB20, and our air compressor is totally crapped out, so we're headed to the rental store so we can rent, I guess, like an industrial diesel air compressor or something, hopefully, so we can get that thing done.
our cold jet dry ice blasting machine has just got here. We're so excited to get this thing unpacked, hooked up, and get it blasting. The guys from Cold Jet are gonna be coming in a few days and uh, we'll be installing it permanently in here somewhere. I'm so excited. Yeah. I'm gonna have to cut that box nicely and put that on the wall. I think we can frame that. All right, we're gonna get this thing put in here. We're gonna start tearing into it. Hey guys, what's hey guys, happening? How's it going? Giles, nice how's it going, to meet Giles? you. Good to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you, Kevin. Kevin, nice good to meet you, man. Brenna. Brenna. Nice to meet good you. Good to meet you. So, you guys made it all the way out here from Ohio, Cincinnati. And yeah. you came from Connecticut. Connecticut, all the way from Connecticut. So, so the guys and gal are here from Cold Jet. And this box that's been sitting in the corner of the hangar for a few days, we're gonna finally get a chance to rip into it. We're gonna get the compressor hooked up and we're gonna learn all about dry ice blasting today. Yes, sir. Awesome. Let's do it. I'm excited. Right here. Awesome. Yeah. Let's get at it. Let's do it, man. All right. Uh, man, this thing's heavy. Yeah. <laughs> Any kid who receives a gift this big and this heavy, they would be pumped. Oh. I thought for sure it'd have a bow on it. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta you gotta pay extra for the bow. Oh yeah. darn. Oh here's here's the big one. Yeah, this is the, the big unboxing. I'll help you. I don't want you to have all the fun. So all we gotta do is fire up the compressor and we can start dry ice blasting. All right, we got air. Cool. We have air. Dry oh, ice. There's some dry ice, okay. Uh, let's get over here and let's see what this thing will do. Absolutely. So I've got the brake on. So we'll sure. go ahead and there you go.
All right, guys, so I just officially found my new favorite toy, my new favorite tool for in the hangar. This thing's awesome. So this thing has been chewing through all this bird crap on this engine. It takes it right off and it's hard to explain how hard that and how much and how stuck on that bird crap is. So you hit it for a few seconds with this thing and I don't even know where it's going. It's going somewhere, but it's not on the engine anymore. So I think one of the tests is gonna be to hit this delicate surface. I mean, we're hitting this metal we see what it does, it takes the crap off, it leaves it clean, but what's it gonna do right in here? Find out. So we got half of this engine done here and I wanted to clean up half of this engine just to show the difference. If you look between the front and the back of the engine and look at the difference in just like how clean it's come. That took me like 15 minutes of blasting, if that. We're gonna get the front half of this clean. I'm gonna get on the back side of this prop. So many of you guys commented it in the videos, are you ever gonna clean that prop? Well, I might have known that we were gonna be cold jet blasting this engine, and that cold jet was gonna take this right off. I really wanted to see what it could do. All right, so we got a visitor here at the hangar, my girlfriend Nicole, and we thought we'd give her a chance to play with the dry ice blaster as well, because I can't have all the fun. What do you think? I want one of these for like our, our pool. All right guys, so this TB20 is, absolutely come such a long way. Thank you so much to Larry from MOMYC for coming down and thank you to Harrison and Jake, especially for pulling my weight when I was sick and I was stuck in Dallas. This thing's awesome. Everything cleaned up so, so well. The whole crew from Cold Jet, thank you so much for coming down here to Hangar. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to use your awesome machine 
on all the projects here. And most of all, thank you guys for watching. It means so much to me that you guys give us some of your time and join in on the adventures here at Rebuild Rescue. Guys, don't forget, like, subscribe, follow us, check us out on Instagram, buy some merch. I'm gonna get back to the cold jet machine. And guys, guess what? This project is done.